In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get a random document uh, in Mongo using Go. Um, we're gonna leverage the Go uh, Mongo driver, the one that's created by the MongoDB team. Team. Um, we're gonna be using, so if you're looking to just copy and paste code on my screen, you can see right now, this is everything you'll need. This function would return a single item, single item from this cars collection in my case. Uh, feel free to copy and paste it. I've included a link to the written tutorial down below. That goes to people, for people who are also looking for, um, who are watching the rest of the rest of the tutorial. Uh, again, uh, the, this is all written down, and everything I'm going to go through is all written down below. Um, and so um, we're going to go through the whole thing. We're going to set up a, a Go boilerplate code. This Go boilerplate code is a great starting point. There's two parts to it. It's there's an API port. Uh, so there's a CRUD portion, which is like that idea of cars. We're going to create, delete, um, update select cars, um, and that all exists in this Go boilerplate code. And then there's the second half of it, where it's you know, a user sign up, a user sign in, and a log out. And so there's two parts, we'll get this all set up and running. I'm assuming a few things. You have Mongo on your computer, I'm running version 1.15. You have Mo uh, MongoDB on your computer. Um, it's on your computer and it's running. Um, I'm gonna connect using just like a localhost 27017. So no username, no password, no SSL, nothing like that, it's all for, demo and development sake. Um, I'm gonna use Mongo Compass to visualize the data. So again, it's free on, on the Mongo website. Feel free to download it. And lastly, I'm gonna use Postman to make API calls out to the API. So let's first, um, so this is the project we're gonna be using. Uh, this is the code base. I've included a link to the code base down below. Please star it, it just lets me know that people are still using it. Um, I'm gonna start by downloading the code base, I'm not gonna use GitHub in this case. Um, I'm gonna unzip this and put it into an area on my desktop uh, um, so that I can use it, so do the same. I've put it into a folder called Mongo Random. Uh, it's sitting on my desktop, and so I can to open this up. So I'm gonna use Goland, it's the editor of choice. You can use any editor to do this. There's nothing, no preference with Goland, but um, it's the one I, I pick. So I'm just gonna open this up, open up my project. Hit open. Okay, let's spend you know a few minutes talking about this this API. So we have the handlers. So I'm blocking it now. We have the handler, handlers, the models, the repositories, and the services. So the handlers take the HTTP request um, and it will package it up and attach the request body, for example, to a struct. That struct will then get passed into the service. So the service that's where the business logic lives. Um, service may call the repository, which is the data access layer, and then throughout that you're gonna pass around. Um, essentially structs, which all live in the models. And that's kind of the breakdown of this project. And we're gonna kind of go through it. We can start by looking at main.go. So in main.go, we have a validate function, validate auth, which is just checks to see if um, post sign in or sign up, you get an auth token back. That auth token um, allows you to pull and, and update your own data. So um, that's what that does. Uh, we're not just, we're gonna look at this main function here. Um, we're, we're, we're going to update the database name here. So I'm just going to call this random.db. Uh, and we just, I'm just going to click here. I'm going, it'd be the equivalent of going to db, then db.go. Oh, it didn't actually open. As you can see, you can see that connection string that I was talking about earlier. So the local host 27017. Uh, and then it sets up all of our instances of our repository services and handlers. And then you can see the, the range of endpoints here. So sign in, sign up log out, and then all the ones related to cars. Um, one thing about this, this Go Boilerplate project, um, since uh, I, I, there's no uh, encryption set up with the passwords, uh, one thing I do is I disable passwords by default, so the sign up actually doesn't work out of the box. So let me just, I'm just gonna go to services and then user service. If I scroll down to is valid password, I explain it more, but pretty much this is a development um, this is uh, just supposed to be used for a starting point. You can add your own B encrypt and figure out uh, security and password, um, password encryption on your own. So as a result, every time someone tries to sign up, no password is valid. I'm gonna switch this to be true because um, I'm okay with any password and it's, it's always assuming it's gonna st store in plain text. And I'm okay with that just because this is just a demo. Um, yeah, so um, set that to true. I'm just gonna close everything. 
I'm going to open this project up in my terminal here. I'm just going to head over to uh, my desktop, and then this is called Mongo Random. Let me, I'm going to clear it, make it a little bigger here. I'm going to do go run main.go. And that's going to start up the API. Um, so, uh, since that's a little startup, the one catch in here is we actually don't have a random endpoint. So, I'm actually going to stop that. I just want to confirm that everything was set up and working for now. I'm going to kind of return back to our written tutorial. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to start by adding a repository layer, uh, which is this get random here. Then, we're going to add a service called uh, get random, Cra crazy uh, creative with the names. And then, lastly, we're going to add a get random handler. Second last, I guess, and then we're gonna add an endpoint here. So let's start by just. I'm, this is just gonna be a copy paste. I'll, I'll, I'll circle back and explain it all. So I'm just gonna copy this whole get random. And it's gonna be tied to the cars repository. So as you can imagine, open up repositories and a cars repository here. Scroll to the bottom, and I'm just gonna paste that in there. Uh, keep scrolling here. So now I want to add the service. So cars service get random. Open up car series and just scroll to the bottom here. That's not car series. Scroll to the bottom and paste there. We're gonna have to do an import here. The errors package. And then last here is this new get random or second last. We have to still, still add the endpoint. So uh, cars handler. Scroll to the very bottom. Paste it. And then we're gonna add this special API. So main.go, scroll the bottom here, just above the router.run, router I'll put special the API. So special slash car slash random will give us a random car. So let's let's just start by just walking through here and what what did you just paste in? What is it all doing? Um let's start with the handlers uh, here. So the newest handler we just pasted in is it takes a if you haven't seen the get all endpoint here yet it, it's another video there but um essentially what we're going to take is a page in a limit this is for pagination so uh, it starts on page one and shows us the first 25 items then we can increment increment that to page two and show us the next 25 items and so on uh here it shows it takes make model and year these are all query parameters they're all optional um, so if we want to filter by make or model or year one or all of them, we would just pass them in as query parameters on top of the page, the limit, uh, this next section, we just do some, uh, conversion from strings to integers. So for year page and limit, uh, so then we do some checks on our page. So the limit can't be greater than 30 must and can't be less than one. Same with the page page must be, must, can't be less than one. Um, and then we build this all into the list carp query, which is one of our models here. It, it just rep it just makes it easier. It represents what the information that we require for our, our method. Uh, so then we call it the get random service. Uh, get random service is fairly simple. Uh, it calls the get random repository method. Uh, if an error is thrown, it returns an error. If there, are, uh, if it is more than one car. In length, uh, it returns an error, and then otherwise it just returns the first car. This is the the method that we're all interested in today. Um, this is how we're going to pull out a random document. So what we're using is the aggregate here, um, and what we're doing is we're going to run a what, what they call a pipeline. So we pass in the contacts, and then we pass in the pipeline. And so the first part of it is match, which allows us to filter down by the specific requirements we have. And so that's for us, it's this filters uh, variable that we have, um, which is here. And this filters uh, variable is a method that's tied back to list car query, that, that struct that we passed in. So here it passes in email, um, and then the email is the first and filter. So I mentioned earlier that uh, all data must be retrieved by the owner of the data. So that's why we have this whole authentication step. Um, so I insert a card into the database. 
my emails attached to that, that car object. Therefore, I'm the only one who can pull out that car object. Next, it then begins to check to see if we have a make on, on the query. So if we've set make and doesn't so it doesn't equal empty string, we do a lookup of an exact match, and then we do a lookup of uh, starts with. So let's say we're looking for the word Jaguar. And we pass in the word Jag, for example. It gets caught here using regex because it starts with the string. So starts with is at and then wildcard is at, is at the end there. So jag in this case would get caught, but if it, there was three letters ahead of jag, let's say, and the jag was the ending of it, was the suffix, it would not catch it. Um, or it's an exact match. So if we someone passed in jaguar as another example. So either or, so this is an or, or filter, and that or filter then gets passed into our and filters. So now it's the email uh, and the make matches, either way, similar or exact match. Same thing is true with model. And then lastly is year. And we don't do that similar match with the year because it, you know, 2000, you know, if it starts like 19, nine or like 19, like there's a ton of options there. So we just do an exact match with the year. So uh, we return that whole and filter and that kind of builds that query. So that's the um, filter aspect. So that's the match part of it. So uh, we're getting results back um, using that match. So the output of that thing is fed into the input of sample uh, into this next portion of the pipeline, which is sample. And sample is what allows us to pull out n number of documents at random. So uh, in this case, we said max size is, is one. So we're just gonna pull out a single object. And this whole thing returns a cursor uh, and, and an error, but if the error doesn't happen, we iterate through the cursor and we decode the car object um, onto the car struct, and we build a list of cars. In this case, we return a list of cars, but we actually only want one car because of this line here. So it's all fairly straightforward. Um, let's test this out. Let's see how it works. Um, so this is where your Postman is going to come in. Uh, let's get this API up and running again. So let's just confirm that A, our syntax is all good with our Go API. Uh, with everything we just copy and pasted in there's no breaking changes or anything like that okay so it looks like it's all up and running so the first thing we're gonna do is do a sign up uh, we'll provide an email and a password and we'll, it will return us an auth token and we're going to copy and paste that one as you can see i've done this before so i actually have these all saved but i'll just like explain them all out um, the first one here is a users slash signup. So localhost 8080 users slash signup. It's a post request. Uh, our headers are content type application JSON. And this is what our body looks like. So we're gonna pass, it's gonna be raw, it's gonna be a JSON object, I'm gonna pass an email uh, and a password, and I'm just gonna hit send. So it creates a, a token for us, this is important. I'm gonna copy and paste that one. We'll be needing it later. Uh, next, we're going to insert some cards into the database so we can just have some sample data. So I'm going to, again, I have this already saved, but I'll, I'll just explain this. So it's another post request. This time, again, sorry, 8080, this time slash cars, slot, and then it ends with the slash. Uh, I'm just going to delete this header, it doesn't matter. Our headers are content type, application JSON, authorization, bearer, and then that auth token here, I'm just going to paste right in there. And then the last one is a are on different cars. So I'm gonna add a few cars here. So I'm gonna hit send with this first one. So for Anzo 1994, or 1994 for Anzo, let's go with the Jaguar. Uh, F pace, I'll do 2021. Hit send. Go BMW. Uh, we'll do like an X3. We'll do this one to be uh, 2018. I'm going to do McLaren P1, and we'll do a 2016 McLaren P1. So we have four cards in the database. So let's just, uh, next, before we try to pull a random card out of there, let's just go open up our compass, and let's actually see this data in the database. And hopefully that um, email attribute makes a little more sense when you see the data. So I'm just going to connect using an empty string. It, otherwise, you can just use localhost 27017. And then my database is called random.db. 
Okay, so we have a lot of data in here. This is what I was looking for. One user, I signed up. One session, signed up. <laughs> Got that auth token back. And then there's four cars. So Ferrari, Jaguar, BMW, and the McLaren. So all four of my cars got inserted. Uh, let's try out that randomized uh, endpoint. So I don't actually have that one saved. So let me just quickly look back at my main.go to see the endpoint. So it's slash random slash car slash ra uh, random. And sorry, that's a get request. It matches our get all. So I'm actually gonna use that as my base. Copy my auth token. It's a get request, so it's gonna be get, and then it's gonna be um, special cars random. Clearly, I've done this before. Content type application JSON, and it's gonna be authorization, and then it's bearer, and then paste that auth token in there. There's no body because it's a get request, and then we're gonna hit send, and so it's gonna return a single car. So I got the Ferrari back. Let's hit send again. This time we get the McLaren back. Hit send again. I got the Ferrari back. Ferrari, BMW. And so uh, one thing we did there on the handlers, as I'm saying this out loud, the page and the limit really don't make a difference. Um, what if I do uh, model, let's do Jag, just like that. Please add a car first. Oh, sorry, make is the, okay, so nothing was coming back, right? Because there's no, Models with the name Jag. It's make that I'm looking for, make Jag. Since the Jag is filtered out, so I only actually only get one document first. So in my pipeline aggregation query here, let me just open that back up. Um, match here, it pulls out the Jag. It's actually my only document and then puts it in here and asks for a sample. So in this case, I will always get back Jag uh, since it's the only option I have. So I guess my camera kind of cut out there, but. Um, thanks for watching. This is just the get random using uh, Go and Mongo. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe. I'm going to come out with another video next week.